I'm Steve from This Week With Cars, and right now I'm at Junkyard Digs Old Garage. They're moving into a new garage, new shop that they're setting up. And behind me is a Datsun 280Z that I guess Kevin bought and didn't know it was fuel injected. So he thought it would be a better project for me to work on. And so I'm going to load it up and get it over to my shop. Looks like it's pulling easy, so the brakes must not be locked up. Well, I have the car loaded up, so I'll see you sometime in the future when I have a chance to take a look at the Stotson. All right, it's sometime in the future. Uh, I think it's been a couple weeks, maybe two or three weeks since I picked up the Datsun. Right now it's negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit outside, so I need to take care of a few things on this before I try to even move it outside because I want to spend as little amount of possible outside today. So as was apparent when I picked up the car, it does have a flat tire on the side, so I'm going to have to fix that. There's no fixing the tire itself. You can see it's just come completely apart. Let's see if there is a spare tire in the car at all. Okay, let's look down under here. Okay, so there's just a space saver spare. I'm not going to put that space saver on, but I do have other wheels and tires sitting around. So I'm going to go grab one of those and that's what I'll put on the car. I have a set of these Western turbines sitting around. So I'm just going to take one of these and I'm going to put just one of these on the car for now, just so that they can be rolled around. These old wheels use the acorn style lug nuts. So I will need to change my lug nuts when I go to the turbine wheels. These are kind of a pain in the butt because you need to lift the wheel up to get it up onto this surface because it doesn't ride on the lug nuts. So I like to turn it so that it's straight up and down like that. Sometimes the studs are long enough that you can just get a couple lug nuts started and then pull the wheel up onto the lug nuts. Okay. Now, they'll all be centered and I can get the lug nuts on easier. As you can see, I have the Dodson 280Z moved up here so I can work on it. But we need to cover a few things first. I got this car from Kevin over at Junkyard Digs. Now, he has a video of him finding this car and maybe doing some work on it. However, I haven't seen it. We are releasing this video and his video on the same day. So I haven't seen his. I don't know what he's tried on this car yet. I don't know what he's done. I don't know exactly what it looked like when he bought it. I've seen a couple pictures of the shed that he pulled it out of, and that's about it. So if you haven't already seen his video, now's a great time to pause this video, go over to Junkyard Digs and watch his video on this car as it precedes any of this video and then come back to my video and continue watching from here. Well, let's take a quick look at this. As you can see, it is pretty rusty, especially down on the rocker panels. Inside, yeah, it's pretty dirty. Carpet's pretty bad. Bunch of stuff in the back there. At least all of the wheel covers are here and most of the interior is intact. Coming up to the engine bay, these are probably some of the worst ignition wires that I've ever seen. I mean, one of these, there's just the core left of it that's holding it together there. So obviously I'll need to take a look at that. There is no battery in it. That's where I'm gonna start. Put some power to the car, see what happens. So this uh, car needs a lot of work just by looking at it. Uh, Luckily, one of the spark plug wires is still connected. I don't know if Kevin did that 
or if it was actually there but that could be a good basis of which cylinder is cylinder six on the distributor if that's not the case then we'll have to find top dead center let's go around to the other side it looks like the radiator might be leaking with all of this uh, corrosion here that's a good sign that the radiator has been leaking we're missing our little hose right here hope i hope that not too much has gone into the intake there i hope that the engine is still in okay shape i have the battery sitting in there now i did have to pull out that plastic tray that was actually the original plastic tray for this car and it had a little drain that went down to the frame there and uh, after i did that i set the battery in there and the whole battery uh, bracketry had collapsed luckily the battery will not fit down because of the fender so i've got the bracket just kind of sitting in there and it looks like they were just using some of these wires here that they twisted together to hold the battery in before so i've also pulled these out to get them out of the way try to get anything that shouldn't be in there out of this car now let's just lightly touch the negative terminal here I already have the positive hooked up. Let's see if there's any spark. There's not. Must be safe to hook up. Yeah, let's go inside, turn the key, and see if anything happens. Real quick, I should check the oil. Make sure there is some. Yep. Looks like there's plenty of oil in it. Here we are inside of the lovely dots, and you can probably see some of this dust blowing around in front of me here. But uh, let's turn the key to on. Nothing happened there. Let's uh, hit the starter, see if anything happens. No. Okay, nothing is happening at all inside the car. Nothing turns on, nothing does anything. So we are connected to the battery, but we don't have any power. So the next place to look is the fusible links. You can see some examples right here. The different colors on these fusible links represent what resistance is these are going to melt at. And the, these cars have four of these. Two in this box, which should have a plastic cover on it. And normally they're mounted uh, so that this, this part with the wires would be facing up. Someone's been in here and messed with this. This one here, you can see is all kinds of messed up. So I think first thing I'm going to do, you can see that this one here has been bypassed. They cut this wire, which usually went here, then went through a fusible link down to this other side. Well, they've just bypassed that and taken it straight to this side without a fusible link. This one, however, here just has this really chunky wire right here. And I do think I have some fusible links sitting around, but for right now, I'm going to get my jumper lead that has a circuit breaker installed on it and put it here instead. That way it's a lot safer option and I'm not burning up fusible links. I was walking around the car to get my jump leads and I noticed that the brake lights are on. So I need to deal with this first before we move on to the fusible links because if I leave these on, it's gonna drain the battery down on me and then we'll run into more problems and more issues. Okay, so I am in the driver's foot well right now and if you go up the brake pedal there, there is the switch for the brake light. I'll see if I can reach up in between there. Oh, okay. Maybe that switch has just completely disintegrated. Looks like part of that switch fell apart once I pushed the brake pedal in. And that is why it's not being pushed back to uh, cut the circuit and turn the brake lights off. So I'll have to pull off the connectors right there on the back of that switch in order to turn the brake lights off. Okay, so what I've done is I've disconnected this connector that was shortly behind the brake switch and now the brake lights won't be on and I'll just leave it this way until I can get a new switch to make the brake lights work properly. Okay, I'll show you what I've done here. This is a handy tool that I've built a long time ago. Basically, it's just a standard alligator clip set and then I put in a connector for a fuse and you can buy these circuit breakers at an auto parts store and they will fit into a standard spade fuse fuse box. And so now this has a 25 amp circuit capability. And if I connect this up to something that draws more than 25 amps, it'll trip the circuit breaker and cut the power to it. So I have my alligator clips hooked up where the fusible link would go, where that green wire was before. Now hop back in the car, see if this has made any difference. 
All right, turn the key again so I can find it. Hey, there we go. Now I've got power. Let's see. Let's give it a crank, see if anything happens. Nothing. You can hear the starter solenoid trying to click over, but the starter is not running. So, time to go take a look at the starter. So here we are near the battery, and down here is the starter. And attached to that is the starter solenoid. So we have power coming into the terminal closest to me, this big one. And then when the solenoid kicks over, it puts the power to the further one and down to the starter. Well, this little wire up here, this activates the starter solenoid. Now I'm going to disconnect this, and then I'm going to hook up my alligator terminals straight to that so that I can activate it here from the engine bay. And I'm gonna grab a hammer and tap the starter while I do that. We'll see if we can get free the starter up, and then if it does, then I'll move my alligator clips back to here and set them on the starter and try to start it from the inside. Okay, now I'm just gonna take my brass hammer and give the starter a few taps. Try to activate it. There we go, and it works now. It was actually turning the engine over. So I'm gonna connect the wire back up and we'll try it again from the inside. Back inside, I know the starter works, but will it work from in here now? No. There it goes. So it may have actually been just a flaky switch before. Not sure if it was stock or if it was just a switch. But it is kind of, it doesn't quite act quite right. See, I can't turn it all the way, but then if I push it in, then it will go into that position. Not sure which way I was doing it before, but either way, we have the starter working now. The ignition wires on this car are just in horrible shape. So this one here is connected to number six. I don't know if it was connected to number six last time this was running, but let's just uh, take that bet and make this number six. So I wanna find this wire and then I wanna take my paint pen and mark the other end of it as number six. So then we know the firing order. So this one right here, I will mark with my red paint. And now we know that is number six. And then following the firing order around the distributor cap, I can hook up the rest of the wires. So I have a set of new spark plug wires and I also did get a new cap. I don't have a new rotor at this point, but I'm gonna pop this cap off and then transfer my new cap on and hook up the number six wire to this spot and then follow my firing order to hook up the rest of these wires. It's pretty funny that these wires are in such bad a shape over there because they look almost brand new when you get up here to the cap. So maybe an animal ate them over there. Not sure, let's see how bad this old cap was. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. There's some corrosion there, but it doesn't look that old. Rotor. Again, there's a little bit of corrosion right here, but not that bad. Looks perfect inside there still. These cars do use an electronic ignition system. They don't use points, so I don't have anything to deal with the points here. So the ignition system is either gonna work or it's not. There's no in between. And an electronic ignition system like this doesn't require the maintenance every year like a point system does. You can't see it right now, but I have all my wires laying on the fender over here. And I do have them ordered from longest to shortest. So number six was right here before. I guess I don't need any of this anymore. It's a bit of the old spark plug wire left on that one. Next after six would be two, and then we've got four, and then one. Next is five, and of course last is three. And then of course there's the coil wire. I have a new one of those as well. 
So our ignition system is hooked back up, but we don't know if it works. So I'm going to take a spark tester, and I'm going to hook it in line here. It doesn't matter which cylinder you do this on. And it will show us, by flashing a light in here, if we do have any spark being produced. So I'm just going to set it right here. I should be able to see this from inside. And I'll crank the engine over, and we'll see if this flashes. I didn't see any flashes from inside, so I don't think that we have any spark right now. Now, there's a couple things that it could be. Our sensor could be bad in our distributor, or our coil could be bad, and we might not even have power to either of those things. So that's the first thing I'm going to check and see if we even have power at the coil. I have my multimeter hooked up and I have the positive on the positive terminal of the coil and my negative is over there on the intake manifold for a good ground. I'm going to go turn the ignition key on and we'll see if we get any voltage here at the coil. Okay, we are getting good battery power to the coil. So we know that the at least the key part of the ignition system appears to be working correctly. The next thing I want to test is I'm going to turn the key to the start position and we'll make sure that this maintains power because if we're trying to crank it and we're actually losing power to the coil, the car is never going to start. Well, or at least in our case, show us any spark on the spark tester over there. We didn't maintain 12 volts while I was cranking the engine, but it was 8, 9 volts, which is completely acceptable. So we do know that the coil is powered while cranking as well. I'm going to go turn the key off so that I'm not draining the battery. Just for fun, I've moved the spark tester to cylinder number 6, just to make sure maybe there was a spark plug problem or a spark plug wire problem with cylinder 3 or 4, whichever one we used before. I'm going to try to start it again and see what happens. Okay, this was flashing this time, uh, so maybe while I was testing the coil, I might have jiggled something loose, and now the coil does have power when it didn't before, So, but I'm not sure if it's just a cylinder. So I'm going to move this back over to the cylinder it was in before and test it and see if that cylinder has any spark. Okay, again, we do not have spark on this cylinder. So what I'm going to have to do is pull out the spark plugs. I'm going to put new ones in, and then I'm going to retest this again. Let's get all these spark plugs replaced. The spark plugs I've been pulling out haven't looked that bad. So a little confused as to why I'm not getting spark on that cylinder. I have the new spark plugs installed and I still have the spark tester plugged into the same cylinder that I was not seeing spark on before. So I'm gonna crank it over again, see if we get spark this time. Still no spark, so that's really strange. So what I'm going to do now is hook up the spark tester on every single cylinder to try to give us a clue of what's going on. Maybe it's a bad spark plug wire, but these are brand new. It's all off of the same cap, which is brand new. The, so you would not you would think that if one cylinder was getting a spark, they all would. So let's move the tester along and see what we find out. This is cylinder number one. Cylinder number two. Here's number three again. This is the one that we had a problem with before. Number four. Number five. And number six.
I took a look at that video that I just shot and I should have turned off the lights when I shot it because I don't think that you saw all the sparks that happened. And uh, so I can tell you what happened is there was sparks on some cylinders, sparks on not. And the ones that did have spark, it didn't seem like it was consistent that it was firing every time that it should be. So I think what the problem might be is the reluctor inside the distributor. This has electronic ignition and there's a little re reluctor wheel that rotates and triggers the spark to happen. And I think we should reopen the distributor, take a look at that, see if we can clean it up, and then let's check the spark again on cylinders that we know we haven't seen firing at all yet. Here inside the distributor, this is the reluctor wheel. And as this rotates around, each of these points, when it comes in contact with the trigger here, uh, tells that coil that it needs to fire, and that causes a spark to go out to whichever cylinder the rotor is pointing to at the time. The sensor itself could be dirty here where uh, it's trying to detect the points. The reluctor wheel could have corrosion on it, causing it to not be picked up correctly, or we may have a problem with the sensor itself. But first, I think I want to try to take the wheel off, and then we'll be able to see the sensor better and see if we can clean that up too. Okay, here's a better look at the reluctor wheel. Each of these edges, as it passes the sensor, triggers the spark to happen. So I'm gonna take this over to the wire wheel and freshen up each of these edges. I wanna make sure that I'm very light with it and don't take off any material to change the gap very much. Okay, I've cleaned up all of the edges. So now these edges here are nice and clean. So now I'll take a look at the sensor. What we're looking at now is the detector for the ignition module. And this little strip right here at the edge of the screwdriver, that's what gets triggered by that wheel. You can see there's a bunch of little flakes of metal and stuff stuck to that. Now you can see it all cleaned up. I'm gonna put it all back together and we'll try it again. And I have the spark tester hooked back up to cylinder three, which is the one we haven't seen any spark on yet. I'm gonna turn the lights off and then crank it over again. We'll see if we have spark here now. We have a good spark there now. We had no spark before and now it's even a consistent spark. So I'm gonna leave the ignition system as it is now, and let's go take a look at the fuel system. To give you a little idea where we are, here is the differential in the back, and the fuel pump is located right here, right, right. to the inside of the right rear wheel, and it looks like the wires have been disconnected from it, and they should be coming through. There they are right there. So here's the wires that probably did go to the fuel pump. Uh, I'm not sure why someone had disconnected these. Kind of looks like maybe there was just a wire nut on there. Um, so the first thing I need to do is put my multimeter on here and see if we are going to get any power from the key down to these wires to activate the pump should we have one that works. I have the leads for my multimeter connected up to the two wires there. So I can watch this. I'm gonna go turn the key on and we'll see if we get any voltage here on the multimeter. My multimeter does have Bluetooth, so I have my phone connected to the multimeter. And now as I turn the key, we'll watch and see if we get any voltage there. And if we do, okay, there we go. So the ignition key does turn on the power to the pump. So now we can test that pump, see if it's good. If it is, we'll hook the wiring back up. And if it's not, we'll replace the pump and we know that we have working wiring going to it. Looking at the pump, you can see the positive and minus symbols there. So I know the one with the blue connector is a positive. The one with the red connector is my negative. So I'm just going to hook up these wires to a battery real quick and we'll see if it does anything. Okay, I've got my jump pack here, have my negative hooked up here and We'll touch this to the positive and we'll be able to hear if the pump runs at all. So that's, no, you can see it's sparking. It's taking power, but the pump must be seized. Probably from old gas has gummed it up and the pump no longer works. So that means I now need to get this pump out of here and replace it with a new one. I have the old pump out. You can see that someone has wrapped it in duct tape so that it would fit correctly into that clamp. So I'll uh, grab a new pump and put it up here and we'll see if we need to fix some of the stuff that they botched before we put the new one on 
and then uh, and I'm also going to want to put a filter in line so that if there's anything in the tank it doesn't get sucked into the pump. Before I hide everything in corrugation I want to show you what I did. Obviously here's the new pump. I did connect some new wiring up to the old wiring here and I'll put this into corrugation so that it doesn't rub on anything. And then I've also replaced all of the hoses that run from the pump to the tank. And then I've added a filter here. So this will connect up here to the new hose right there. But for right now, I'm not going to be using the fuel tank. I have right here hanging from the rear bumper a little drip gas tank. It's got a valve so I can shut it off. I'm going to connect this straight up to the fuel filter and I'll run the car off of this bottle for now. As the corrugation is on and the fuel is hooked up. Time to get in, turn the key and see if the pump runs. Okay, I'll turn the key. We'll see if we hear the pump and then we can check the fuel, make sure it did pump fuel up uh, through the filter. Yep, I can hear the pump running. You can hear it sucking fuel in now. Let's check the engine bay, make sure there isn't any leaks. I can hear the fuel coming up here now. I don't know if you can hear that. There's a bit of crackling. Okay, there is some fuel leaking right there. So I've got a couple injectors leaking fuel. But this is a good sign. Now we have fuel up to the engine. Now that I have fuel up here, I need to focus on the injectors. And you may have noticed before that one of the injectors is unplugged. So I need to get this plugged back in. And actually over here, this one, this wire has become broken. So I need to take this connector off and I'll need to see if I can fix this. So I'll need to get this insulation broken off so I can see how much of the wire is exposed here that I can connect up to. Hopefully that there's enough there that I can reconnect this in some way. Okay, it looks like it's broken off at the pin in there. So now I'm going to have to try to remove the pin from the connector and see if I can reattach it. I was able to use my pin removal tool to pop that out. Oh boy, you can see how corroded this pin is. And I'm sure that all these connectors are corroded like that. I'll need to take a file in there and clean these out and also clean the uh, connector on the injectors as well. But at least now I can get this reattached here. So I did get a new wire attached to that pin, but it's just too fragile to use. But it's all for the better because I went to the parts store and they did have a new pigtail. So I don't have to worry about the corrosion on this one now. I'll get this wired up, uh, just butt connectors up to that, put some heat shrink on it. And at least my number six injector, we know will have a good connection to it. I have the new connector fitted. Just connect that up to the injector. There we go. Before I try to start it, I want to build something here to draw air in through the mass airflow sensor. I don't have one of these hoses at the moment. These always break on these cars. If they get old, the little accordion here always breaks. Uh, very few 280Zs that you've seen that have sat around for too long have these in good shape. I don't have one of those, but I do have this piece of iron pipe. And I was thinking maybe I could just set this in here like this and then make up the difference with some good duct tape. And at least then the air will be traveling through the mass airflow sensor and I can get by just long enough to see if this car will run. I have my iron pipe duct taped in there. Actually, it's pretty solid. It's not a perfect solution, but it's a perfect solution for today when I don't really have any other choice. Now on the other end of that, I don't have the hose that goes here to the air filter either, but that's probably okay. Don't want it sucking anything from the air filter in anyways. So I think now it's time to just turn the key and see what happens. All right, here's the moment I've been waiting for. First trial start of the Datsun 280Z. Got fuel pressure. There it goes, it's running. Speed's going 
line up as the injectors are starting to work. It just died on me. Wow, look at this stuff. It blew out all over the floor. This is uh, chunks of foam that I guess the mice must have crammed into the exhaust. Seemed like the throttle wasn't returning. I thought that the throttle wasn't returning and it seems like the throttle is actually completely seized up. So I wonder if, there we go. Get the throttle backed off there a little bit. Yeah, I think when I had hit the gas, I had pushed it open a little too much. All right, well, what happened is I actually forgot to turn the fuel valve on and that's why the engine had died. So I'll get down here and turn it back on. Actually, the fuel turned on this time. See if it'll start. Well, there you go, a running 280Z out of a junkyard or a barn or wherever Kevin got this thing. I don't need my circuit breaker connected anymore. And I found a uh, kit of fusible links that I had in the back. As I stated, these are different colors because they're different amperages. And the one that I have missing, I believe should be red. So I'll take one of these red fusible links and I'll put it there instead. It's pretty simple, that's all there is to it. It just loops from one terminal to the other. And then there would be an opaque white plastic cover that covered this up so you didn't get water inside of here. Right now it's about five o'clock at night and there is just a little bit of daylight left. So if I can get the clutch working, then we can find out if this thing drives or not. Clutch master cylinder is right here. I'll try to get this cap off and see what it looks like in there. I got the cap off and there is still fluid in it. So that's a good sign that it's not leaking. I haven't even tried it to see if it works. Okay, pushing on the clutch pedal, there is zero resistance there. So I don't think it works. I think someone must have pushed the pedal, either I or Kevin, and it pushed uh, the piston in the master cylinder back and it got stuck in that position because there's nothing here but spring pressure right at the moment. Well, I think that's it for today. I was hoping that maybe I could get it running and driving, but I would probably need to order some parts for the clutch and brakes to make that happen. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.